Good morning, my students. Today we will start with unit number six, habitats, and it's lesson number six, pond life. That is the second last lesson for this unit. You have to refer to your science textbook, page number seventy two, and page number seventy three. Just to give you a recap of the lessons that we have studied so far, in the beginning I studied, I taught you about the habitats and homes. Then we I taught you what are the carnivores, which animals are called herbivores. Then we talked about how the animals and plants are adapted to their different habitats. And in the last lesson we discussed that how the pavements, old bricks, and all walls becomes the habitat for many of the plants and many of the animals. Today we will discuss. Like how the pond is the habitat for many of the water plants and for the water animals. So let's start. We have seen pond everywhere. They are in the gardens, parks, hills, and farms. You can see the pictures of the pond that they are in different gardens, farms, hills, and mountains. So you can see pond everywhere. Now we will discuss pond plants in this lesson and pond animals. We'll start first with the pond plants, and we have variety of the plants in the pond water. We have the plants that are floating in the on the surface of the water of the pond, so that they can get enough of the sunlight. Then we have some of the plants that are rooted at the bottom of the pond water. Then we have the plants in which they have some of the uh, plants have the leaves above the water surface and some are below the water surface of the pond water, and then there are some of the plants that are growing on the edges of the pond. It means at the corner of the pond. We will start one by one and we will discuss each of this category of the plants one by one. First, we will start with the plants that are floating on the surface of the pond water. Among them, the first one is the duckweed. You can see the picture of this uh, plant that is uh, floating on the surface of the pond water. So these both pictures showing the uh, plant that is duckweed in the pond water, and it is floating on the surface of the pond water. The another one example is of water fern. This is also another pond plant that is floating on the surface of the pond water. Then we have water lilies. You can see it's also a plant that is floating on the surface of the water. You can see how giant are the leaves of the water lilies. Next category is of the plants that are rooted at the bottom of the pond water. Their roots will be in the bottom of the uh, pond water. The first example is of water milfoil plant. We can see its roots are in the water, in the pond water. This is also the same example, the picture of the water milfoil. So it's a plant in the pond water whose roots roots are rooted or in the bottom of the pond water. Next is Canadian pond wheat. You can see the picture of this plant. This one is also the example, uh, the picture for the Canadian pond weed. So, Canadian pond weed and water milfoil are the plants that are the whose roots are uh, rooted or they are in the bottom of the pond water. Next category we have for the pond plants that they have the leaves. Some of the leaves are above the water surface and some are below the water surface. The example is of water crowfoot. This is the plant whose leaves are some of the part is under the water and some of the part of the leaf is above the water. You can see the pictures of the water crowfoot. Next is water arrowhead. This is also a plant whose uh, roots are, whose uh, some of the leaves are above the water surface, and some of the leaves are below the water surface. You can see this one. So, water arrowhead and water crowfoot, they are the plants whose some of the leaves are above the water surface, and some of the uh, uh, leaves are 
below the water surface. Next category is of the plants that are growing on the corners or the edges of the pond. Let me show you the examples for these plants. The first one is rush. You can see his rushes. You can see it is at the edge or the corner of the pond water. Next is reeds. You can see this plant also. So it grows around the edges of the pond water. Water forget me not. You can see this plant also growing at the edge of the water pond or pond water. Yellow flag iris. You can see this one at the corner of the pond water. You can see the picture of yellow flag iris. So the plants, rush, reed, yellow flag iris and water forget me not, these all are the plants that are growing around the edges of the pond water. Now we will come towards the animals that are in the pond water. Like it goes on the same sequence, like there will be the plants, there will be the animals who will be eating the plants and they are the herbivores. And then these herbivores will be become the food for the uh, water animals for the carnivores. So let's start with the uh, plant animals which are eating the pond plants. The first one example of the water snail, mayfly nymphs. You can see the picture for this one. So these are the herbivores that are feeding on the water plants. Then we have frog, we have tadpole, the newly hatched frog and tadpoles, they also feed on the water plants. Next is, as I told you, that these herbivores will be eaten by the carnivores. So the carnivores that are in the pond water are the water beetle. You can see the picture of a water beetle. Then here is an example of water spider. So these are the carnivores who will be feeding the herbivores in the pond water. We have dragonfly nymphs. We have pond skaters. You can see the picture for these water animals. Again, I will repeat, these are the carnivores who will be eating the herbivores. Now you can see here, water beetle eating the snail, water beetle eating the frog. So water beetle is a carnivore eating a snail. Here you can see water beetle is eating frog, so it's a carnivore. You can see the example of the food chain in a pond water. You can see shrimp, its feed is the pond weeds. So it's a herbivore. Then shrimp is eaten by the frog and frog is eaten by the fish. The same food chain goes on as in other habitats. That herbivores will be eating the plants and then those herbivores will be eaten by the carnivores and then those carnivores will be eaten by the bigger carnivores. You can see some of the birds, duck, they feed on the small water animals. And there are some of the animals that will just simply visit the pond to drink the water. Now the pond water uh, protects the animals, the water animals from the uh, land animals. So they are hidden in the water in the pond water so they will not be eaten by the land animals so pond water becomes a protection for the water animals and the next is that it also protects the all the water animals from the quick temperature changes as the uh, temperature changes of the water uh, changes uh, temperature of the water that changes very slowly as compared to the air so in the winter the water freezes on the surface and down the plants and animals can survive at the bottom of the water without freezing you can see here the picture at the surface of the pond water there's a layer of ice 
so this underneath this uh, ice the plants and animals are protected from the harsh weather of the winter now you have to refer to the fact alert that is on textbook page number 73 and it's about water lily you can see these are the leaves of the water lily and this there you can see it's so giant they're found in Africa and you can see a baby is sitting on that leaf so it's about 2.5 meter of length so it can support the weight of a baby or of a small child you can see a baby sitting on a leaf so the leaves of the water lilies are very very bigger one just to summarize the lesson for you today we discussed the habitat of a pond and how the plants and animals are living in the pond water we discussed some of the pond plants in which we discussed that some of the plants that they are floating on the surface of the water then we discussed some of the one that are rooted at the bottom of the water pond water then we discussed that some of the plants have the leaves above the water surface and some are below the water surface and then we discussed in the last that how some of the plants are growing at the edges of the pond water then we discussed some of the water animals that they are feeding on the plants water plants they are called the herbivores and then they are some of the water animals who are feeding on those herbivores and they are called the carnivores and then we discuss the food chain and then in the end we discuss that how the pond water becomes uh, a protection for the water animals and how the pond water is uh, protecting the uh, the plants and animals from the harsh weather conditions of the winter so I hope that all of you have understood this lesson and I would like you all to go through your page number 72 and 73 of your science textbook so you can memorize your lesson nicely. Thank you everyone for listening and for watching the video and I hope you all are safe and fine at your homes. Goodbye.